just to share a bit about my background profile. So actually, I'm from the Department of uh, Engineering Technology, Faculty of Technical and Vocationals. So I have been uh, as a lecturer in UPSI since 2009. Eh? 2009, and I graduated from University Science Malaysia. Science Malaysia. So I settled my PhD in 2012 around 2012 and my convocation in 2013 and 2013 so now already 2023 so around 10 these 10 years i already uh, set graduated my my own uh, master student of seven students and PhD two students so total nine students so nine students settle within 10 years and I already completed my research research around 13 around 13 research accumulate around almost half million ringgit and settle regarding my publications so I already write the number of people almost reach up to uh, so my niche area is focused more on TVET, STEM education, construction technology, industrialized building system and the latest involved with the technology educations, technology educations. And the total of publication uh, you can see here, I reach up to 171, uh, almost 171 articles include, include the uh, journal, uh, book, and then also uh, conference paper, technical paper. This is my involvement. So most of my involvement involved with the construction industry development boards. I also involved with the Department of Skills Malaysia, JPK. I also active with uh, SIAS uh, regarding the uh, SKM. Okay, so this is a bit about my background and also uh, appointed as the chief editor for the ASEAN Journal of Assessment in Teaching and Learning. I also appointed as the editor in Journal Pendidikan Chakrawala, Journal Pendidikan IPA, which is Corpus Index, also Chakrawala Pendidikan, Perspective of Science Education. So this journal belongs to Russia. And also appointed as a visiting professor, adjunct professor, and coaching more than 100 uh, workshops. Okay, and this is my book. I publish uh, Pendidikan Technical and Vocationals. I also publish the journal writing and publishing uh, research uh, guides. So my co-editor is uh, Prof. Ramli Mustafa, my mentor. So he's uh, from the, our professor from Faculty of Technical and Vocational. And I also learned a lot uh, from my uh, best friend, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Bala. He is an expert in uh, writing journal, especially in uh, Q1. Okay, let's go to our main uh, agenda. Eh? Once you want to write your thesis, if you write, if you want to write your thesis, you must find the existing. You need to find the existing uh, thesis that already published. Because you can improve, eh? you can improve the previous research based on the published thesis. And the best thing is, yeah, sometimes we feel blur. Eh? Sometimes we feel blur. Sometimes we don't have idea how we want to start our writing. So the first thing is, 
you need to search the existing thesis that already published. Yeah, now, now you can search everything is online. And you can search everything is online and try to go to the library and look through the thesis. And the first thesis that you need to read is your supervisor thesis. Uh, that's the key things that we need to, 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 to find the thesis first. Because you need to know your supervisor writing. How, what is his uh, writing style? So you can learn a lot from there. Because from the supervisor, from the supervisor thesis, you can learn a lot and you can request from his uh, previous students and you can read through study, especially the table of content. So the table of content can give a lot of idea yeah, from the sub item, yeah, from the sub item topic under the table of content, you can get idea, you can, uh, you, you know how to start yeah, at least from the topic and the most important thing you will learn the flow the flow of writing yeah by study the table of content so today we will try to cover the title the problem statement the objective and yeah, the problem framework and the literature review so the title do's and don'ts so title must be specific yeah. title is too general try to avoid too general type uh, uh, title yeah. because from the title you can extract your your thesis into chapter one two and three yeah for example for example let's see okay let's see you choose your title and analysis on cost impact and strategy of payment among contractors in Malaysia construction industry. So from here, the main, the, the type, the key word or the variable inside your title, you will elaborate into chapter one and chapter two. The key word here, for example, payment. So from the payment, you need to explain regarding the background research and the payment issue. And then you mention also about the contractors. So you need to discuss about the contractors issue. And then you also touch regarding the, who is your respondent? So involved with the Malaysia construction industry. And then which is regarding the education technologies yeah. and then you want to use let's see uh, apps development yeah. and then you and then involve with this with the uh, teachers who teach for the let's see biology uh, subject uh, so so you must discuss regarding the education technology you must discuss about the uh, the uh, apps development and then which res who are who are the responding involved in the study and which topic that you focus uh, let's say you focus for the uh, biology for example uh, and then from here you will elaborate into chapter one the surface which you touch the surface but the detail you will explain in chapter two this is a flow based from your title that's why the title is very important you must know what you want to measure that's why in the title must be measurable uh, don't be very hard to measure don't do the t don't do the research which you have very difficult to collect the data you must make sure whatever topic that you that you propose, you must make sure that you able to measure. Eh? Maksudnya bila anda memilih tajuk thesis, anda perlu memastikan bahawa 
kajian itu boleh diukur eh boleh diukur dan boleh diambil eh maknanya bila menjalankan satu kajian pastikan data tu boleh dikutip eh and then you must and then once you want to measure it must be uh, compare apple to apple not op apple to orange eh cannot eh uh, you must make sure if you want to conduct a research it must be measurable for example you cannot mix eh? i got one case because i i went a lot of uh, i went a lot uh, with the viva session and you cannot mix between the teacher and student data you cannot mix eh maknanya data pelajar dan guru tak boleh dicampur it must be separate eh that's why you need to clear from the beginning of your research who is who is your respondent the teacher the student the management or the uh, parent might involve with your uh, study uh, so you must be very clear eh? you cannot mix eh, the, the the data which mean the background of the student must be similar and for example if you want to call it for primary school you focus primary school you cannot mix the data from the primary school and the secondary school you cannot mix and the third things clear unit analysis uh, that's why uh, as i as i mentioned earlier uh, you must clear with your unit analysis uh, who how you want to measure and then from here later we can discuss if you want to do quantitative what will be the best thing uh, to analyze and then we go for qualitative and we can go to up to quasi experiment later i will explain yeah because these three area of research i have some fundamental when i did for my uh, phd yeah? so i can share some of the idea how we want to conduct the research and to to write your thesis and then the research is easy to be carried out uh, try to avoid the investigation process is difficult eh? and there are many obstacles uh, you have many you, you need to spend a lot of time because usually if you conduct if you are a master student normally you will target to complete the research between 1.5 to 2.5 years for phd i think the minimum you will try to complete within 2.5 to 4 years to complete your phd and normally if you want to collect your data for master maybe the maximum is six months and for phd normally the maximum is one year don't go more than that yeah you must you must conduct the research based on the objective each of your objective must be answered in chapter by chapter for example normally if you go for your the first objective of your research usually and usually the first objective we want to identify the problem we want to see the gap of the research normally the first objective will be answered in chapter 2 yeah? will be answered in chapter 2 under the literature review okay so i would like to see uh, if you can share your title of your thesis if you have please share in your chat box later i will try to discuss based on the audience yeah? I would like to request all of you try to write your title of your thesis inside the chat box. So at least I will try to discuss related to your topic. Boleh? Maknanya share topik-topik PhD dalam chat box ni. Jadi saya akan cuba bincang berdasarkan uh, audience yang hadir ni. Okay, maknanya oh, Syazami buat pasal keusahawanan dalam kalangan persetusian Malaysia. Oh, menarik. 
uh, pembelajaran ekspresi seni catat. Okay. Modified fleet classroom. Okay, fleet classroom. Okay. So we have from China student eh. Niman kei ting ma. Wo hui jiang hua yi yi dian dian. Wo de min zhe shi duo de a sha li. Ni men kei ting ma. Ah saya bercakap Cina sikit-sikit lah. Apa lagi? Consumer willing. Oh, oh banyaknya. <laughs> Ada yang museum, okay. Alright. So from here, so I will try to discuss the 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 English title first. Eh? Let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, we I try to discuss one of the topic, one of the title topic, the title thesis. Effects of a modified flip classroom on student achievement in English listening and speaking ability. So, which means you will have the things that you want to discuss in your chapter one to three, a uh, chapter one and two. You will discuss regarding the the concept of flip classroom, and then you will also. You also want to measure the English listening and speaking ability, and then my advice is in your title you need to insert also who is your respondent, who is your respondent, which means let's say you want to call uh, focus, let's say Shanghai province for example. And let's say yeah, Shanghai province. You must limit. Uh, if you mention like this, maybe you want to collect the whole China. Then, if you want to limit your title to to limit your data collection, then you need to insert which province that you want to focus. And then, you want to focus for the for the university student. Or you want to focus the secondary student, or you want to focus for the primary student. So you need to brush the title. Okay, and then another thing that I would like to emphasize: normally for the PhD, eh, what is your novelty? Ah, okay, this one we can move on. We can move on to other thing. Okay, novelty, jaya novelty, yeah. Okay, alright. So your title must be very clear. Can be defined. Studies are based on theory, and not on your one one's own idea. Ah, okay. Not emotional and has consistent facts. Do not divert from human logic. Okay. If you want to conduct your research. Okay, for PhD level for the novelty, you must improve based on the theory. You can improve from the methodology. For example, eh, for example, you want to collect data with the Juvana, yeah, Juvana, uh, Juva, from the Juvana. Uh, girls, for example, or for the Giovanna uh, boys, where they have cases that they have did because their age is under 18 years old. Eh? So uh, regarding the methodology, also you can contribute because I got one, because I, I previously I conduct one workshop, one of this, uh, our participants, they share, in order to collect because uh, because the researcher is female so researcher is female so she can so she can directly uh, speak with the Giovanna ladies but for the male she have to conduct the research by through chat uh, she, she can still see the face of the Giovanna's voice but uh, in order to to for the safety purpose, they only can by using the chatting. 
uh, chatting with uh, with which protected by the by the mirror and eh, by the transparent mirror that they can see each other uh, so the methodology also can become part of the contribution because each of the research they have their uh, their strength they have their own strategies so strategies in order to collect data also can become part of the contribution or novelty for your research that's why uh, usually the examiner they are interested with if the, the how you give they don't want to see and they they they, they, they dislike to see the end the, the the end of the result which mean they do not know the process eh, biasanya pemeriksa mereka berminat untuk melihat proses mendapatkan data ah eh, proses so contohnya from the policy maker you have to deal with the policy maker because if you want to get the data from the juvana or from the any criminal if you want to get the data, you need to get the permission. Also, if you want to go to the school also, you need to get the permission from the Ministry of Education, especially for Malaysia, any 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 school in Malaysia under the government, you need to get the permit, you need to get the approval before you go to the school and you are not allowed to take any pictures. Eh? They, they uh, the, 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 the researcher, are not allowed to take any pictures in the schools. Eh? Everything they have uh, have the guide. Yeah, they have the policy that you need to obey. Yeah, uh, that's why uh, contribution in the methodology also can be part of your uh, contribution in your thesis. So the first thing will be the theory. The second will be the methodology. And the third one can be the uh, the results. Uh, the results also can. And based on the result, let's see. You can improve the uh, the level of the understanding of the student. You can elevate the skill of the teachers. You can improve a lot in education system. And the last thing is, the contribution also can be the policy. Uh, but normally for the research for the policy is quite uh, is quite uh, is 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 only limited for the top management or the or the for the ministry level because if involved the research regarding the policy you might have very limited access because it involved with the policy especially with the education uh, that's why my advice for those who want to conduct research under the education i will advise them as long you can improve or you can increase the marks of the course uh, let's say from the title that i get this morning Let's see, ah, memorizing Quran, be able to memorize a lot of uh, ayat or memorize a lot of juzu. Very simple. Uh, and then let's see, kemahiran apa ni bercerita antara guru dan prasekolah. Uh, and then be able to, apa nama ni, uh, telling story, improve the telling story. And then let's say for English, and then if you conduct the English based on your flip classroom, the student marks because let's say you give some tests and the student carry marks uh, become better and then they're able to pronounce the English much better. So you must have some rubric that able to measure the performance of the course, the performance of the subject. And then let's see. Uh, regarding the apa ni? regarding the uh, seni eh? regarding the arts and then regarding the AI 
So if involved with the courses, uh, involved the subject of the uh, subject of the course uh, curriculum, it's easy to measure based on the the achievement. The achievement of the exam that will be one of the part another part is you might can uh, focus on the uh, pedagogy yeah? you can might focus on the pedagogy and then you might can focus on the psychology yeah? ada juga eh? yang measure on the psychology part yeah? uh, so you must make sure that everything that you propose in the research your title must be measurable. What is the rubric? Uh, before you want to run any research, you must make sure that, 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 that the research, the thesis that you want to conduct, they need to have the rubric because usually the examiner, if they want to, to evaluate, they want to see what is the rubric. What are the things that you want uh, to have the, the, the checklist that you want to measure this thing. Uh, let's say you want to measure A, you want to measure the B part, the C part. It must be measurable. That's why I will advise you try to find a similar thesis or the similar research that already conduct. That will be much more helpful eh, because you just need to improve Let's say the research already conduct in Australia. So you want to bring the idea from the Australia to Malaysia. Let's say you find out uh, this model is successful conduct in Singapore. So you want to bring the idea from the rubric from the Singapore to your country, let's say in China. So you need to, uh, to do the uh, the improvement and eh, the improvement for the survey, the improvement for the interview question in order to suit with your country, your locality country, let's say in China, in Malaysia, or in UAE, or in Iran, or any of your origin country. So you can bring the good practice from the other country to your country. Uh, so that's why the title that you want to choose is very important. That's why in the, in the beginning of your uh, writing thesis, you need to read a lot. Uh, you need to read a lot. Don't just read a lot, but you need to choose the correct, the, the, the targeted title. Uh, you need to know what you want to conduct your research. You must know what is your key research. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can also carry your research regarding based on your idea, but you must make sure that the idea yet that you select, it must be uh, logically can be carried out. So actually, in order to choose your title, you can based on your own experience and or others. My advice is if related with education, go to the ministry of education interview with their policy maker because you will get involved with the the real problem uh, the real problem normally by sorry normally for for my final students eh, my final student just uh degree eh, <laughs> this degree student they also able to publish scopus journal why they able to publish Scopus Journal? Because I will request my student, you go interview with the uh, expert teachers. Go to the Ministry of Education. Go to see the policy makers. Because you will get the, the real problem in order to solve the problem. Uh, that's why uh, normally for, the, for my own student, I request them for the problem statement, you go interview. Because normally problem statement, you can either get from the literature review or you can go for interview. Like this one, the title also, you can get from your own experience or others, either which means you go interview with the policy makers. 
That's why who who you want to interview. That's why if you want to interview, interview you must make sure the the interviewee need to have the experience at least 25 years, 30 years. And then they also hold high position. Let's say they are the principal of the school or they are the the uh, the 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 someone involved with the policy in the higher education institutions at least when they hold in the high position and they experience a lot like say 25 years in the in the, in the in their position they can see the trend and kalau kita nak temu bual kita kena pastikan orang tu berada dalam pengalaman at least 25 years lah, 25 years and then dia mesti memegang jawatan tinggi supaya dia boleh melihat tren permasalahan 5 tahun, 10 tahun, 15 tahun and then they can give the 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 the, the direct problem that you need to solve for this research. Yeah? Okay and then you test the theory, yeah? you can test the theory and then also you can conduct uh, the the research based on the previous study and also based on the current issue yeah. so for the malaysia for the for those who are conduct the research in malaysia you must read the blueprint eh? blueprint education do you know about this book I will give the link. This one is already in digital. You can download it. I will share in in the chat. Okay. Can you download the document? Tipa. Tipa ada tipa. Tipa boleh download ke? Tengah cuba doktor. Alright. Alright, thanks. Uh, so yang ini adalah kitab kuning lah. Uh, bahasa ni lah. Kalau bahasa yang putih ya, Bible lah. If you want to conduct a research in education, this is the Bible lah. Eh, that you need to download lah. Ni, Malaysia Education Blueprint eh. Uh, 2013 until 2025 for the preschool to post secondary education. Ah, uh, You can check anything. Let's say you want to see about the apa nama ni uh, teacher uh, no lah class classroom ada lah classroom oh. okay alright so inside this uh, books they have uh, seven three yeah seventy three discuss about the classroom uh, let's say you want to see the classroom issue yeah, you can study by searching the keyword only apa lagi tadi ah uh, tvet okay you want to see about tvet tvet ada tvet tvet got four ah uh, ni ada tvet nampak ni analyze conducted by unesco uh, whoever want to discuss about TVET, you need to go for UNEVO. UNEVO ke? Ah ni. Ah ni ni ni. Those who want to conduct research about TVET, you can go to this website. Kejap. Ah ni. Ini menarik Nampak ke? Sekejap. Later you can go through lah. You go to the world level lah. You go to the world level. Okay. Alright. Okay. For those who are doing for TVET, you can go for UNEVO under UNESCO. You also can go for UNESCO also. UNESCO. To see the 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 education from the world perspective uh, you can read through because they come out a lot of education report here you can see uh, 
they got a lot over here so i will share the link later you can go through yeah, for the international okay good thank you very much Deepa. and later you can read through at least you know because if you want to conduct any research you need to see the existing yeah, the existing policy what are the best practice that already done from the from the unesco from the our ministry of education at least you can and then you can get the idea from there to to bring it in your thesis at least you can have have a lot have a lot of idea to write when you read these uh, documents okay let's proceed Ah, let's proceed to my two. Okay, for your information, all the thesis in Malaysia, all the thesis in Malaysia, they already put inside Malaysia thesis online. Malaysia thesis online. I will share you the, you the link. Let me see. I will share the, you the link inside the my tool. Later, if you want to have my slide. And then, uh, okay, by waiting, while you are waiting for me, I just want to share. So now they have almost, they, okay. Normally the thesis inside this, um, Malaysia thesis is under the government. They involve with 24 institutions, mostly from the government university. And then they have 146,000 records. And they got four languages. If you are lucky, you can get the full thesis here. Okay, you can choose by searching the title, author, subject, and then you can search. Okay, let's say you want to go for vocational. Okay, or you want to go for Tafis. The Tafis. Ah, ni banyak Tafis ni. Ah, okay, go. And then let's say I try this one. And then from here, you might can get full thesis because it published in 2021. You click this one. Ah. If you are lucky, okay, click here to get view. Uh, everything is here. I think may I think this this is maybe cover under chapter one. Buku surat enam puluh sampai empat berapa ni? Buku surat enam puluh cover sampai ni sampai before kerangka. Uh, sampai teknologi maklumat je. Cerita tiga favorit dia tak masuk. Which means you have to go to the library. You have to go to this university library in order to get the full access. Ah, dekat UPSI je pun. Ah, if you are UPSI student, you can go to our library lah. It's easy. Mari. Okay, now I want you to search based on your keywords. Try to search if, uh, at least five theses related to your field. Yeah? Later, if you want to download you can go from here. You can download from here. So normally at the bottom on the left side, they will have the button to download. Hopefully you can find your thesis title. Tuition, okay. So tuition is banyak. They, they got a lot of tuition discussed here. 
and then for example from here you can see so the thing that the keyword here that they measure for example the first title eh? if you see normally they will put where the research will be conducted peranan dan persepsi terhadap pusat tuition di satu kajian di daerah Gombak so they will focus the district under Gombak so they will discuss regarding the perceptions the role and the perception towards the the tuition center eh, a case study in uh, gomba eh, district gomba uh, so the, the in the research they focus the perception and the role tuition center a case study in gomba okay all right, right. <laughs> So they, they, they focus here. All right. Okay, let's move because now already 10, 10, 10 a.m. We just discussed the title only. Eh? <laughs> Full of lagi. Bab lain lagi kejap. Cepat. So allow me to move now already 10 a.m. So hopefully you can get one of the idea. Eh? idea. Eh, another tool that you can use. Uh, Dr. Nade Ali Ibrahim, research tools and research tool by Nade Ali Ibrahim. I will share you the link. Another research tool that you can use, which created by Dr. Nade Ali Ibrahim. Okay, so what uh, Dr. Nade Ali Ibrahim did he put everything regarding the research tool and regarding the research tool it, it's quite heavy eh? research tool need a basket because he put everything here can you open research tool by dr nadi ali ibrahim all right so they uh, he share a lot of tool eh? he share a lot of tool that you can use from here put your idea and note in order writing your literature review is guideline for author graphic organizer prisma uh, for those who are interested to do for the systematic literature review you can use this uh, Prisma as one of the tool in anal uh, tools for analyze the systematic literature review. Uh, PhD toolkits, paper template, uh, register. There's a lot of here. You can go through and try to to see what is your need. Uh, you can use it. He put everything here, so. It will help you a lot. Ah, okay. And then this is a paper generator. Nampak? Ah, you might want to use this, this tool. Later you can try to explore using the research tool by Nadi Ali Ibrahim. I highly recommend you to use this tool. And go through and try to explore the tools that he already shared with us. There's a lot of tools here. A scholarly paraphrasing tool. Normally we use quick mod, quick mode. So you might want to use other tools that can help in your writing. Okay. All right. I think that's will be enough just to share you some idea okay, we move to okay this is one of my students Natasha Zukanai okay so based on her success from her master and from her master last time, last time she regarding the SIPA 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 is related to the constructions law eh? 
construction law and i was in at a speaker but i recommended my my own student to deliver the keynote speech for the resolution and changes implementation challenges seminar so, so the most important thing is once once the, the key person who did the research i will recommend my own student to deliver the speaker in order to increase her confidence confidence level and to show that her research is valuable not everything that once we complete our research we put under the carpet eh? we want to make sure that anything research that we conduct either master or phd that we contribute the knowledge and use by the society though so she become the lecturer last time she worked in the construction research institute of malaysia now she become the lecturer in uitm eh? okay normally thesis will have these five chapters introduction literature review methodology finding and the last one is discussion recommendation implementation and conclusions all right, all right i already discussed about this and this is a, a sub a sub type sub topic for each chapter one that uh, start with the introduction and then with the background research and then problem statement objective research question hypothesis theoretical framework, operation definition, study limitation, important of research, and the last one is summary. For your information, for those who are uh, as the master student, for the master student, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, you need to write at least 50,000 words. Uh, 50,000 words, uh, at least. Uh, Jadi kalau nak menulis dalam master full research at least 50,000 PhD at least 80,000 minimum eh minimum for PhD at least 80,000 words so you need to divide let's say you want to target your PhD settle within 3 years so within 3 years they say for three years you got uh, you got six months. Three years you got no, you got six semesters. So eighty thousand word divided by six semester for which means each semester you have to write at least thirteen thousand words. Anda kena menulis tiga belas ribu eh perkataan. Tiga belas ribu ni. Katalah satu page thesis tu katalah dalam 300. Maknanya at least 45 pages lah. Which means you can target for each semester at least you need to have at least 50 pages lah. At least 50 pages. And for your information for PhD level, normally for those who are fully researched for PhD, you can target at least your chapter 2 100 pages. Ah, eh? Lagi tebal, lagi mantap lah. <laughs> eh? Lagi tebal, lagi mantap. Eh? Eh? Normally, the examiner, the first thing, when they receive the thesis, what they will do. Ah, eh? You know, the, the examiner normally, eh, they will search their name. <laughs> That's why my, my advice for those who already know your examiner, try to make sure cite their paper, cite their thesis, and they will be very happy where their knowledge and eh, where their paper, their books, or their conference paper cited in your thesis, if you know lah, if you know. That's why I always remind my student, you need to know the prominent researcher in your research area based on the keyword. How do you want to know? So I will advise my student, you can go through Google Scholar. I will share my link. 
to make sure that you know who who are the expert person in your area okay from here if i click stem education so the most powerful person is lead yeah? lead from sonama eh? sonama state university you can see she get 100,000 citation or oh, Ariel and Burr 23,000 so you must make sure from the this keyword you can know their uh, research uh, and then you can make sure that you know in your area who are the expert here one you can go through Google Scholar another platform and from this paper, remember, for the, from this paper, let's say cited. What do you mean by cited? How many people already cite your paper? You click this button, you can know these are the people who already cite your paper. Uh, MDPI, uh, from UNES, from Apony, Taylor and Francis also cite uh, my, my student paper. This is my student paper. Springer also cite my student paper. You see? This is very good. Yeah? Uh, 2022, recently last year. So if you if you want to cite paper, you go for the higher citation. That shows that this paper uh, is uh, valuable, which means the, 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 the paper that written already is good to be cited okay one you can use google scholar which means you can download how you want to download on the right side here if they mention here pdf which means you can download the full version easy for you yeah. if you use the google scholar platform another platform i recommend how you want to search the expert person by using the research gates Okay, what are the good thing about research gate? From the research gate, you can communicate. You can communicate with the with the author, with the expert person. Uh, you can communicate. Okay, during my PhD, once you know the expert person, Nick Bilismas. Once you know the expert person, you also can communicate. So Nick Bilismas is from RMIT, eh? from MIT. You can see here, last time I emailed to him, we lost, I emailed him, 2010, eh? uh, How are you? I would like to request feeding the survey form to identify the weightage attribute for set up the location of IBS manufacturing. I appreciate if you could spend a few minutes to circle the rank factor. Alhamdulillah, he replied. I sent the email 8 November and he replied 8 November. Betul ke? 8 November. Takkan reply 30 August. Uh, maybe I re I have uh, communicate him previously. Uh, and, and then the, the good thing, he replied. Uh, they willing to help you, even though you are a candidate as PhD student. They are willing to help. So Nick Bilismas is one of the experts uh, regarding the construction industry in Australia. He is from the RMA IT. Actually, I email a lot, but he he is one of the uh, respond eh, respond very well with me lah. So therefore, uh, it's good. The first step, you, you search the thesis. The second step, you can explore through the Google Scholar, through the research gate. Yeah? Blismas. I think he already retired. Last time I communicate, he already retired already. Need Blismas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then he moved to Melbourne Institute of Technology. Last time he, he from RMIT. So you can still communicate. Uh, 
don't feel don't feel fear with the international uh, researcher from from expert university they sometimes they are willing to help because uh, for your information they also are interested to know what happened in malaysia what happened in china what happened in uae they, they they are interested to know so from there they also can get some information the recent research happened in malaysia that's why i always I always uh, advise my student try to have the opportunity try because email is easy you can just email us any question at least you can get the 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 reason uh, you can get the expert opinion you can know the problems you can know the solutions that practice in their country that will help a lot uh, beside you have beside you are supervised by your super your own supervisor you also can communicate with this expert person to assist you and eh? to give you idea and eh? to give you some solution idea and eh? in order to solve your research you can uh, get this uh, opportunity and the examiner for sure they also uh, will feel will, will feel that you able to communicate with the expert eh, from the other country uh, to to help to help you uh, to give you idea and and to have a better uh, solutions in solving the research. Another platform that you can use is Scopus. Okay, for your information, if you want to access the Scopus database, you can access the Scopus database through the server UBSI. If you are studying in UBSI, if you if you use the Wi-Fi under UBSI, you can just directly assess. And you can directly assess. But if you stay outside UBSI, Let's say you stay in your home, you can access through our library. Okay. How you want to access? You go to this link and then you click login. The username and the password. Yeah. So I think maybe the username is your ID matrix. And then the password may be your, your login ID lah. Uh, for for my case, they use the last four digit IC for the lecturer. For the student, I'm not sure. And then from here, after you log in, you go to the digital library, and then you go to the database. From the database, you go to the Scopus. Okay, Scopus will be the best database for searching the literature review. Can you go through this website? Can you log in? So you can put your key research here. Ah, bobo je apa apa. Let's say tadi mana tajuk dah lagi? Kita ambil tajuk lain. Let's say you want to study about the model of reliable corona coronary artery disease. Wah, ah, ini ah, mari kita cuba lah. Reliable coronary, coronary eh? artery disease prediction. Okay, mari kita cuba. I try this keyword and then you paste inside the search document. And then how many documents you can find out? Ah, you got around 17, almost 18 now. Almost 80,000 documents. Ah, okay, from here. How you want to analyze? You go on the left side. And then it related with the medic medicine field. Eh, betul eh? Ni siapa ni Mirisa ni? Eka. So and okay boleh. And then nanti apa ni Eka. Kalau nak nampakkan dia punya pattern dia. You can clear. Under keyword. You click show all. 
So you can see this research, the keyword dia apa? Nampak ni? Ah ni. So keyword ni ni lah. Cor 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 coronary eh. Apa payah nak cakap <laughs> coronary artery disease eh. Ini sakit apa eh? Artery ke apa? Artery. Jantung, jantung. Tadi first kalau disease lah. Okay, oh coronary artery ni disease jantung. Okay, ini keyword dia lah ni. Nampak ni? Uh, this is a keyword. So you, your title memang cantik lah. Maknanya your title that you choose memang ada dalam database scopus around 11,000. Almost 12,000 paper lah. Uh, and then this, this is a pattern of the research. Uh, so let's say you want to focus apa tadi? AI eh? AI dia. AI kan? Artificial. Learning and sample learning and reinforcement learning, Doctor. Uh, so, and then if you want to focus uh, regarding the hybrid eh? Ni eh? Hybrid assembly eh? Assembly. Hybrid assembly ni apa benda ni? Uh, dia ada dua, dua method, Doktor. Jadi ada assembly learning and reinforcement. So, saya punya supervisor cakap kena masukkan lah cuba uh, reinforcement learning dalam Uh, tahapan ensemble tu. Okay, let's see. We try eh. Reinforcement learning. Okay. Okay, how you want to limit your searching? Okay, you can put the the keyword that you want to limit in your searching here. Refine search. So, they will search reinforce reinforcement eh. Betul eh? Spelling Betul. eh? Betul dia. And then you click here. So, The scope of database will search regarding the re reinforcement learning and they manage to reach up to 24 people. Nampak ni? Nampak. Tapi later you have to go through one by one lah. Because <laughs> under scope of database, they <laughs> only able to provide the title. Scope ni dia ada limit eh. The scope <laughs> only limit to provide you the title. And then they able to provide you the abstract and the keywords. The full paper, we have to go through the website. Website okay. ni. Ni. Uh, ni. View at publisher. Uh, so normally you can hunt the paper through the research gate. Normally research, sometimes, sometimes uh, if the author unable to share the full paper, I, if you can access through the Google Scholar, you also can find the paper through the research gate. Uh, and another one, normally people will use this one. If you know, sign up. How and sign up? Tahu, Doktor. Uh, Tapi tahu juga lah. uh, 2022 up, dia masih banyak belum ada, Doktor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. yeah, for sure sometimes they have limitation kan, betul tak? So <laughs> therefore, Normally, most of the author, they will share under the research gate. Uh, because you can request by personal. If you know oh, yeah. if you know the author name, you can directly request yeah, hmm. from her. Yeah. Uh, tapi plus one ni okay. Plus one ni open access. Normally oh, under yeah. plus one. All the paper is, uh, you can uh, download because open access. Uh, free lah. No charges. Uh, normally, if the author want to receive high citation, they will allow their paper to be downloaded because they want to make sure that their paper to be cited. Uh, clear? Okay, doctor. Okay, hopefully. So, the other person also, you can try to search. I already give you some idea. So, you can use the Scopo database, try to practice. Okay, chapter one. Most critical section is the problem statement. Okay, problem statement. Problem statement, as I said previously, you can relate it to the curriculum policy and you also can get from the statistic. Yeah. Uh, statistic. So let's say you can get the statistic uh, result from the Ministry of Education. Uh, you also can get the data from department, eh? Department of Statistics Malaysia. Department of Statistics Malaysia.
Uh, ni. You also can get any data related to Malaysia from the Department of apa ni? Department of uh, Statistics Malaysia. Now is under the Ministry of Economy. So it will help eh? because if you put numbers in your problem statement, uh, menarik lah. So normally how many pages you have to write your problem statement? You can have uh, a short not as sweet as well. more than that depend on the examiner sometimes if you put everything is relevant it's okay but sometimes normally the examiner will push if the page number is too many they will push to chapter two or uh, push to chapter two if too much in your problem statement and the best thing is you need to make sure in your problem statement at least you have one or two references at least five years back which means the recent research which which already conducted in Malaysia or in any other country. If you go for your presentation, it's good to show uh, like this, which means you put the statement and follow by the references. So she wants uh, to study regarding the issue of uh, writing technical report for the polytechnic student, for, the, for those students who are graduate as the engineer, as the engineer, so they must be able to write technical report in English. And because normally if they work in the international company, they also might need, eh, need to be able to write in English. So, so Dr. Siti Fazlina, uh, so she study uh, to get the problem statement regarding curriculum, material, lack of communication skills is good eh? which means you put everything supported by the references uh, okay this is one of the the way how you to show when you do your for your proposal defense okay this is two of my students okay we move to the objective objective of the study oh sekejap you want to break the job? Can you hear me? Doctor, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, if if we want to refer literature review, you said that it must be five years earlier, right? So is yep. it uh, the same goes to books? If you want to refer books? Ah, uh, book not it lah. Book okay. because the book is a, is the father of the theory. So theory tak ada masalah. But right, book, you. if you want to get the latest book, also you can go here. Google book, ah, semua ada. Try to find the latest version. Sini, mana tu? Bukan earlier eh, five years back. <laughs> earlier mana ada? <laughs> yeah, five years back. Okay, Google book ni kat sini. Ah, semua buku ada. Apa nak? Creswell. Ah, ni semua ada kat sini ni. Ah, semua version-version baru boleh dapat kat sini. So, okay. Objective. So, the objective of the study should be specific measurable, accessible. Uh, accessible ni maksudnya boleh dicapai lah. Eh, boleh di assess. Eh, jangan buat research, data setahun tak dapat-dapat. Uh, itu bahaya eh. Kalau dah setahun tak dapat-dapat, uh, janganlah buat. Eh. And then realistic and suitable. Realistic, you must make sure that if you want to collect data, if you, let's say, okay, you, if you are, let's say you are master student, if you are a master student, normally a master student, if you have complete chapter one to five, you already pass for your viva. Cukup dah. And you don't need to collect one whole measure. If you are a master student, jangan collect data the whole upper state in Malaysia. Eh? Jangan. Tak logic. Eh? Memang tak logic. Not realistic. And for a master student, at least one district. Or if you want to go bigger, you go one state pun boleh lah. Tapi make sure that you able to complete your data within six months. Yeah, my my advice is within six months cukup. Jangan pergi lebih lebih, because normally for master student, if you have complete chapter one to five, you are already pass for your viva and lulus. Uh, but for PhD different. Eh? For PhD, they want to see your novelty. Either you improve for the apa nama di methodology, you improve the policy or your result 
eh, your application that help uh, the school that help improve the apa nama ni teaching and learning improve the pedagogy if you come out a product like uh, apa ni apps development uh, so that that are the things that you need to uh, make sure that your research when you conduct is realistic and suitable with the duration of the study uh, these are the things that i like must be suitable with the duration of your study yeah? you must know when you want to stop once your data is enough you need to pull the handbrake yeah? kena tekan handbrake ni tarik handbrake eh? uh, you need to know when you feel that your data is sufficient yeah? okay objective writing need to be in the form of verbs related to the field and their respective research level okay for example this is my 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 own phd so normally the first objective will want to study the appropriate of precast manufacturing normally for education we want to study the needs uh, we want to study the problem and okay, what are the problem what are the needs uh, so so that will be answered in chapter two normally the first objective will be answered in chapter two and then to determine determine the the site selection criteria for precast manufacturing plant and to incorporate special criteria with decision maker preference with using gis geographical information system yang pemetaan tu analytical model in deriving potential site for future precast manufacturing plant that will be answered in chapter four because my phd i got six eh? i got no, i got six chapters eh? now six or seven they look for seven good okay for those who are doing for ddr design and development research so the the, the objective number one mengena pasti and eh? identify the need and eh? ataupun mengena pasti keperluan instrumen pentaksiran kemahiran motor eh? psycho motor bagi murid bermasalah pembelajaran for the special needs students eh? so and then the second objective membina item instrument nombor tiga mengesahkan eh? uh, validate the instrument and for those who are doing for qualitative so the first objective will be explore eh? explore the knowledge eh? the, the the knowledge of the students regarding the sustainability eh? sustainability how they want to uh, manage eh? Manish, eh? Manish, the de the compost, the eh? compost, a solid uh, compost, solid waste, eh? solid waste uh, compost, and the second objective will be analyze the technique, uh, the technique how to process the decompose solid waste from the school, from the school level project, and the third objective will be to propose the framework eh, the framework as a guideline to do a, a, a compost project in a school so the number okay ddr and the quality uh, qualitative those uh, these two research is for the master these both are from my 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 own master student eh? okay i think that will be clear regarding the objective so you must make sure that your objective will be answered in the chapter eh? chapter by chapter that's why i will advise my student you must make sure that each objective that you highlight you must know where it will be answered in the chapter and that what are the things that will be measured that's why we always highlight that the objective need to be specific measurable accessible realistic and suitable with the duration of the study now we move to uh, conceptual framework okay how you want to get all this thing uh, how you want to get this all item yeah. in order to get all this item 
normally I will advise my student based from this uh, literature review. Eh? Based on the literature review, you can come out this all, all thing. Uh, I will explain in the chapter two. In order to come out this uh, framework from the Dr. Bala, you can uh, from the let's say you want to come out a module from the module let's say you, these are the module that you want to come out so what are the method and quantitative what are the things that you want to measure and the right side will be the output so you will come out this thing so you will come out creative thinking fluency originality creative product Qualitative feedback are the data that you collect from the from your uh, method that you use in your research. So this is uh, the conceptual framework. Yeah. Okay, I will give you an idea. All right. Chapter two. And yeah. so chapter two, for PhD level, you can go up to hundred pages. Yeah. Uh, hundred pages also can and how you want to write for each paragraph try to have at least one reference the more they will be better and then i would like to highlight that each paragraph no not each paragraph each table and figure that you put inside your literature review you need to explain uh, don't just put the figure and table inside your thesis without detailed explanation you cannot put all the words inside the table the table is as the as the idea eh? as the uh, presentation as the big pictures if you see the figure at table it will help you to give the big pictures but the explanation you don't put everything inside the figure a table you put in the paragraph you must explain first and then follow by the table and figure i will show you one of the people how you want to put your explanation Okay, let's see if you want to write quantitative paper. Okay. All right. For example, I have this table. So this table, how I get? I get from here, Scopa database. Uh, from the Scopa database, let's say just now I managed to get around 24 paper, 24 paper already. Okay, never mind. Let's say from the Scopa database, after you refine, let's say I get around 20, around 15 to 25 paper, I think is, is good already. And dapat dalam 10 ke 15 ke 20, 25 betul banyak lah tu. 25, 20 pun dah okay dah. If you get around 20 paper, let's see. Okay. And then you can do in the matrix form, which are the variable that you want to measure. Macam yang Saifullah tadi, katakanlah dia pilih tourism, apa benda dia nak ukur sini. Development ke, apa tadi, cultural ke, ataupun dalam cultural later, you can have the sub-item lagi. What are the thing involved? And which are the location involved? At least you can see. Let's say if, if McDonald's, when McDonald can open the restaurant, they will particular on the uh, the population. Same goes for the hospital. Hospital are very particular on the population. That's why people who live in Nilai, they need to, if they want to go for the government hospital, they have to go to Seremban, because the number of population in Nilai still uh, did not achieve. The number, uh, the 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 number of population that require to open a hospital in the line. Therefore, they have to go to Serban, yeah. So if they want to go for the government hospital, eh? same goes for McDonald. Normally, if McDonald want to open, they are very particular on the population. High population, then 
McDonald can open lah. Uh, normally, McDonald will take about four months eh, uh, to to open their restaurant. Okay, as I said, you must start with the explanation. You see, I explain everything here in table one. Okay. I got 15 common site selection criteria were identified and listed in order rank. So, and then follow by the table. Same. If you want to write your thesis, make sure you must explain in detail. And then follow by the table. And the references I put inside here. And then from here, if you come, if you conduct your quantitative research, a survey from the item, you can convert the 15 criteria into question, into description to do your survey. Uh, nampak? Transportation, maximum coverage and minimizing the travel distance. Nampak? Uh, you can convert it from the item into description. So you can use this as your questionnaire. And then you can put inside uh, ni apa nama ni? Uh, legal skill lah. Because my research I'm using 10. But normally for education, normally they will use 4 liquid or 5 liquid. If you want to use 7 also can, but you need to have the literature review. So I put my literature review here lah. 10 liquid. Ah, ni nampak ni. Nampak ni. Ah. So you must make sure every question that you design, you must highlight the, uh, the references in detail okay the purpose is to enlighten the readers on the theories concept and argument that have been used in the formulating the research procedure okay under the literature review also you you only okay you are not just limited discuss regarding the past research you also can discuss regarding the methodology uh, for phd level and for PhD level, you cannot limit your methodology eh, into one type. You must know, eh, uh, including the theory. You must know all the theory. And then you decide to use this theory. Let's say you, find, you identify to conduct this research, you have five theory. And then you decide to use theory one and two. Can That's why... You need to know all the theory involved in this research and then you will uh, limit and you will discuss what are the theory that you want to use. But for PH, for the, that will be for the master, uh, PhD level. For the master, you can just adopt uh, because master is much more lighter. Lah. You can just adopt any theory that you want to use. Can, no problem. Uh, yeah. Let's say if you want to, if you conduct a research regarding the qualitative, so you want to use the analyzing data. Okay, in the previous research, you can find out the upper the in vivo uh, atlas TI. You can use the content analysis, and then you decide to use which one. Let's say you decide to use in vivo, so you must identify why you want to use the uh, and vivo for example yeah. okay this is uh, the, the the similar thing that i show on my previous paper okay but i will not advise you to put everything like this try to put uh, like the previous one i did actually you can write everything in a sentence but my advice in the table try to highlight the important gist only uh, so, from your literature review, if you use your Scopus database, you also can analyze the things through country. Let's say tourism. And let's say tourism. Just now tourism, we got around 144,000. Okay, which country? Ah, nobody. So, United States is the highest, followed by China, 
United Kingdom, Australia and Spain. So you can see the trend of research based on the country. Uh, Indonesia also among the highest. Uh, so you can study the pattern. You can see the pattern. What are the pattern of uh, tourism in United States, in China, in United Kingdom, in Australia. So you can put everything in the table. So you can study the trend. The five years after 10 years, after 15 years, and the things that measure here will be changed. Give me a variable already. That's why research, we will ask the past five years because they want to see the pattern. After five years, what are the things that change? Uh, and then based on the methodology also, and based on the chapter, uh, based on the sorry, based on chapter two also, you also can study the methodology of the previous survey approach. Nampak ni, guna SAS, Vivo, Microsoft Assess, nampak ni. And then you also can see how they do the sampling method. What will be the sampling method that they use in their research? Nampak. So from here, they will give you a lot of idea how to conduct a research. Nampak ni. Uh, they went and another thing if you want to conduct interview you don't need it with the traditional method which means if people mention about if you go for your if you want to conduct a research regarding interview you are just not limited to have face to face with the technology you can have google meet you can have your you can have your zoom uh, you can mention in your thesis because examiner are interested to see the process, how you conduct the research. For example, problem statement, you conduct an interview because you want to identify the need, you want to identify the problem. And then from the interview, you conduct a survey. You can conduct a survey. Under the survey form, let's say you have just uh, like mine just now, I got 29 questions. At the end of the survey, you can put one section open-ended. Open-ended which means uh, any idea they can put in the written in the survey form. So which means your data you will collect uh, based on the survey and also open-ended which means uh, qualitative. Which means you can, uh, you, your research, you still conduct as a quantitative, qualitative interview or open ended session as the support, uh, to support. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so at least your research still quantitative, but the interview just to help, uh, just for the initial stage. Uh, this is the research for those who are conduct quantitative. For those who are conduct the research for the apa nama tu, for the qualitative, I will have people later on. I got another paper. How qualitative can convert into quantitative? Which means from the qualitative data, you can show in the form of bar chart. Uh, to if you have the number of respondent more than seven. Nah, you have the, the, the number of respondent more than seven. At least you can show the the pattern. Yeah, but the number still will not define uh, will not define as the I said will be the important. But at least the number will show that the frequency of the interviewee agree on the statement. Okay, from the literature review, so you can come out this one. Let's say this theory one, Vygot, Macheart, Domson, nampak ni, Sahal. And then you can come out this one to show the evolution of my uh, multi-criteria evolution GIS. Nampak ni, this is one of the method that I, I highlight 
which mean under JS, you can have loose coupling or tight coupling. This is under the JS lah. So from your methodology also, you can highlight like this also. So you can see the trend yeah, based on the theory. Uh, this is the table that I extract from my publication. This is my uh, master student. She also did like this as I uh, did in my PhD and then she followed the pattern. And then she put on the left side on the country. You can see the pattern on the Malaysia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, Pakistan, Africa, Hong Kong. So at least you can have this matrix. So this matrix will help you to show the gap. So it will help when the examiner asks what is your novelty. So what, where is your problem statement? So you can highlight from here which which are the gap that you want to highlight so you can see here uh, most of the country they still have the problem on the first one payment poor eh? pay master poor financial management uh, so this can become uh, her money problem statement and then she also did like this and then the, the methodology of the researchers so you can see what are the pattern so so you can get idea on how you want to conduct the research okay how you want to justify your methods if you want to go on the surface but you can have a lot uh, you can you have uh, you can assess a lot of uh, the respondents then you can go for uh, quantitative but if you if you want to uh, get a very depth information let's say you come up a product and let's say you come up a teaching kit let's say you come up a money apps development or you come out argumented uh, reality and yeah? argumented uh, reality and then maybe you come out a money module you can use interview to develop your product. So you will interview the experts. Uh, let's, for PhD, at least you can go for seven respondent. Uh, for master, maybe you can go up to three to five respondent. Uh, and then uh, you can test your teaching aid, your product, by pre and post test or maybe you can run through the quasi experiment okay okay that will be the strength between the uh, quantitative and the qualitative if you go to quantitative no most of the rule minimum respondent they request to have at least 30 lah, 30 and the number of respondent. Okay. Now we go to the chapter three. So don't do that. My voice clear. Ke? Share jadual metric. Okay. Jadual metric. Jadual metric ambil kat sini. Ambil dekat pallet ni. Eh. Saya share link dia. Ada yang tadi tanya soalan ke? Uh, Doktor, saya Rohana ha? Okay, saya belajar PhD SEM 4 uh, Sekarang ni saya peringkat uh, Saya guna DDR Saya di peringkat pembangunan modul uh, Saya buat analisis kandungan uh, Satu kitab uh, daripada uh, kitab Abu Sufik Imam Syafi'i uh, Jadi okay. saya sekarang ni dalam fasa reka bentuk Saya perlukan Macam doktor cakap tadi tujuh pakar kan. So tujuh pakar tu ada kata masuk pakar bahasa sekali. Sebab bila saya dah terjemahkan uh, uh, apa dah kitab Arab tu kepada bahasa Melayu. Saya dah jumpa satu pakar bahasa Arab untuk sahkan saya punya uh, terjemahan. Lepas tu saya perlu kepada pakar bahasa Melayu lagi untuk tengok uh, ayat saya bila dia terjemahkan. Dan saya uh, saya dah jumpa lima orang pakar usul fake untuk saya uh, nak bertemu bual untuk uh, bangunkan modul lah. Jadi total tujuh orang. Boleh ke termasuk dengan pakar bahasa tu doktor? Okey. 
Boleh je. Boleh, boleh. Boleh je masuk sekali sebab dia jadi komplement lah. Maksud dia lima tu kepada konten kan. Satu kepada bahasa. Bahasa Arab, nanti you... nanti bahasa Melayu hmm. untuk uh, maksudnya dalam bahasa Melayu ni maksudnya uh, yang tu dah tu, tu elok lah dan difahami. Boleh, boleh. Tujuh tu minimal tu dah cantik lah tu. Maknanya tujuh-tujuh tu ada main peranan lah. Maksud dia yang lima tu lihat, lihat konten. Sama juga kalau bagi mereka yang buat app development, ada dua pakar kena ada. Iaitu pakar konten dengan pakar apps lah. So dua orang yang berbeza. Sama juga dalam case pun sama. Maknanya pakar konten dengan pakar melihat bahasa dia. Bahasa Melayu kan. Then should be okay lah. Uh, so biasa dia akan tanya justifikasi, justifikasi kenapa ambil tujuh pakar? Kita nak situasi daripada sekolah mana? Nah, itu jadi uh. masalah kepada saya. Oh jawapan yang mudah je. You, when you conduct quality The answer will be set to rated. Kalau bahasa Melayu kita panggil dia data tepu. Maknanya kalau you temu bual, tepu. orang yang ke sembilan, orang yang ke sepuluh, jawapan dia tetap sama. So, you can just answer that after I interview the seven, ever seven, seven expert, I still receive the same answer. So, maksudnya data tu dah tepu, saturated. Jelas? Okay, macam tu ya justifikasi dia. Memang ada nasi. Memang ada, you boleh google lah, google apa tu, data tepu. Kalau bahasa buti dia saturated data. Okay, boleh boleh doktor, thank you. Saturated, ya. Yeah. Okay, clear. Ah, tapi yang expert tu memang kena betul-betul pakar lah. Janganlah orang tu baru tiga tahun kerja, baru lima tahun lah. Itu tak 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 kena lah. At least maybe 15 years. 25 years, ah, mantap lah sikit kan. Kecuali bidang tu very rare lah. If very rare to get, ah, then you need to justify. But because if once you conduct qualitative research, you must just, you must explain the background expert. Tapi tak payah sebut nama dia. Nama dia tak payah sebut. Cuma position dia, jawatan dia dengan pengalaman kerja. Kena cerita. Okay, Rohana? Okay, terima kasih. Faham. Okay, good. We move on. Tinggal lagi 35 minit lagi ya. Bateri pun nak habis dah ni. <laughs> Chapter 3 ya. Alright. Ada apa boleh tanya ya. Kalau tidak saya cakap seorang-seorang ni. Nanti itulah semua ke laut nanti. Methodology. Okay, this section contains information and justification towards materials. Theoretical approach, experimental design methods used to achieve, achieve the research objective. Yeah. Okay, once you want to have your methodology, okay, you must highlight process to obtain the data. And that's why in my slide, I will always highlight PhD examiner, they are particular. They are interested to see the process. How you obtain the data? For example, Rohana just now, eh, uh, she conduct apa nama ni qualitative research, which she translate, eh, translate kitab, eh, translate a, a a book. She translate the book, so she need to get the seven experts. So the first thing is. She before before she conduct the interview, so she need to highlight uh, protocol the interview proto interview protocol. What are the protocol? Protocol interview, eh? So this protocol need to highlight in your thesis because let's say, eh, Rohana, Rohana dah kahwin ke? Maaf saya bertanya. Ah, Betul dah kahwin, ada lima ah. anak <laughs> Ah, yelah Sebelum bertemu dengan suami Mesti ada surat eh? Mesti ada kata apa Mukadimah dah, mana ada tu, orang tu Kahwin kan, sama juga Kalau kita nak interview Before we interview a person We need to give a letter ah. 
sama juga kan kalau kita nak kahwin ni if we want to get married normally we will have the apa ni date lah apa kata blind date oh betul putih blind date pula kan dating lah dating eh <laughs> kalau bahasa ni dating ataupun taruf kalau bahasa lagi mata taruf lah kan eh. and then and then if you want to go for your interview you need to give a letter so at least the interviewee will be ready to give the information uh, you give you set a date That, uh, let's say i want to see you on friday at uh, 10 am uh, so at least the interviewee will be ready uh, how you want to get letter you can request from your faculty normally under upsi each faculty we will have a club they can come up apa nama ni invitation apa ni they 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 will they can uh, provide you appointment appointment letter for the expert setiap fakulti kita memang ada kerani yang boleh keluarkan surat lantikan pakar bagi nama ya you just provide uh, their name their affiliation and email address so normally the clerk ataupun kerani itu dia akan bagi surat tu and then you can use that letter to give the expert person uh, that will be the process so once the expert person are ready to uh, agree on the date so you will interview and then maybe your interview will take around 30 to 45 minutes after you interview you get the data and the data normally Okay, normally interview, we will advise you to record and then you need to get uh, he or her permission once you want to record. You must uh, tell him that I want to record. Why you need to record? Because you want to make sure that the information that uh, the person will deliver, you will not miss any information. So through the recording, you will repeat repeat ah uh, dua tiga kali lah you repeat you will repeat twice or triple time to make sure you write everything to to transcribe your interview let's say you say apa nama tu how are you how are you pun also you write inside your transcribe data that's why when you conduct an interview i will advise the student to conduct a semi structured interview So dia ketika nak buat temu buat tu ada dua cara. Normally if you want to go for your interview, you can go for open ended maknanya terbuka, tanya apa-apa tapi masalah anak bini, masalah kucing semua keluar lah. But if you go with semi structure interview, your your question will be uh, will will have the direction. Ah uh, during your interview, if you have the set of question your interview will be have will have the direction at least every question that you ask he or she will answer according to your question after everything you transcribe uh, transcribe is very important eh, because it will help to increase the number of words inside your thesis eh, especially for those uh, master at least 50000 for phd at least 80000 words yeah that will help you can put inside your your apa ni appendix eh boleh bubuh dalam lampiran ya eh. so after that after you complete your uh, transcribe and then you do the analysis you can do the content analysis you can use the thematic apa ni thematic analysis which mean you extract the keywords apa thematic yang you nak highlight tu apa uh, what are the keywords that you come up from your interview and then you write everything back in the proper way and then you show back to the interview selepas you dah tulis semua atas kertas tu you can uh, you can go back to see your interview your interviewee maknanya you can email to him or you can uh, see him face by face to validate back your interview data is it clear boleh eh so, jelas jelas uh, okay so process tu penting process is very important 
Uh, if you got seven respondent, ah, tebal lah sikit thesis tu. <laughs> tebal. Uh, tapi make sure that your question must be answer uh, soalan tu. Okay. And then material and method used in research need to be explained thoroughly and accurately. Uh, reference for method and procedure applied must be stated. Uh, reference untuk method pun kena letak. Eh. Many each method that you choose you need to provide the reference. Ah, this is the, 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 apa nama ni? The idea. Ah, so, I, I share you the method. Okay, contoh yang belah kiri ni qualitative. So, on the left side is the qualitative. My student do, do the qualitative. So, based on the title, problem statement, question, and then what she, she, she highlight here, she using the case study. Under the case study, she got the interview, document analysis, and the observation. Uh, yeah, during the student do the uh, the apa ni, compose, compose, the compose uh, waste compose too. The uh, the student will be interview, and then the student will provide the uh, lab lab report and then we'll and then we'll have the observations uh, okay and then they and then she will analyze the descriptive data transcribe coding category and thematic okay this is for the uh, qualitative and then on the right side you can see this one Okay, she using the triangulation design, multi-level model. Ah, ini lagi dahsyat lah. Ah, ini lagi dahsyat. If you see, she got three stage. Stage one, stage two, stage three. And then, uh, and then this research she's doing on the role and perception of urban park attitude, urban wildlife in Kuala Lumpur. So, and then, then this research, uh, doing the perception, and then want to measure the attitude. Attitude towards the urban wildlife in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, you can see, yeah? And then, and then she, she went to interview the National Landscape, City Hall of Kuala Lumpur, NGO, Build Environment, Professional nampak ni. This is one of the stage. And then she also do the uh, landscape observation nampak ni. Another data set eh. And then she also doing the observation on the urban wildlife and the habitat vegetation. vegetation. And then she also, apa nama uh, do the questionnaire. Eh? Questionnaire to the citizen. And the urban wildlife, nampak ni? Ah, ini betul-betul triangulation method. Semua method ni Interview ada, observation ada, questionnaire pun ada, nampak ni? Ah, very comprehensive. Uh, we call this type of research triangulation design where we want to make sure the research data collected is watertight. Eh? Watertight. Tidak ada yang kebocoran lah. Okay. Alright, this is my uh, PhD student, Natasha. Uh, okay, you can see here, she doing step by step. Step one, step two, step three. So step one from the problem statement will be answered by the literature review, background study of the payment from the uh, literature review. And then uh, she extract, eh? she extract the information from the literature review. Uh, convert into design questionnaire. Nampak ni? Questionnaire. And then she also during the literature review uh, to 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 come up the questionnaire, she also done the informal interview and done the informal interview and brief discuss with the contractor to make sure that the questionnaire uh, that she designed uh, directly 
uh, able to to get the real problem based on the informal interview nampak ni maknanya cara dia bangunkan soal selidik berdasarkan literature review dan juga temu bual and then she want to validate the questionnaire so she she want to validate the questionnaire through the focus group discussion nampak ni dia panggil contractor contractor tu she call the contractor uh, to have the focus group discussion let's say seven people let's say five people ten people and after the questionnaire uh, validate and then she redesign back the questionnaire based on the feedback and then she conduct real survey right? maknanya dia jalankan survey yang betul lah based on the Krichi Morgan contractor ada beribu-ribu and then based on the Krichi Morgan she got 400 sample size and normally based on the Krichi Morgan maybe she get let's say 367 let's say based on the Krichi Morgan she got 380 you can round up the number to 400 because normally once you distribute the questionnaire you cannot get the exact number uh, So you need to throw apa ni to if you want to throw the questionnaire try to uh, adjust uh, more than 10% uh, and more than 20% uh, because normally after you send the questionnaire you will not get uh, apa, complete the questionnaire you cannot get let's say you send 400 you will get 400 you it's hard to get eh? normally you will uh, get less than that after you uh, throw the questionnaire and then you will analyze the data by and then this student using the SPSS. Uh, this is a process that examiner want to see. If you conduct quantitative research, this is uh, one of the example. This is not the, apa? the it's a must. It's, it's not a must. You can modify the process, uh, but you need to justify lah. Uh, so at least the examiner understand the process and then you can do like this in a table form like this. Uh, benda ni boleh tiru. For your information, you can copy paste this one but you need to rephrase lah by using the quick book. Eh. Uh, guna quick book, you boleh je adjust. What are the function of literature review? What are the function of informal interview? Focus group discussion? Question and survey? Uh, so it must be very clear to explain the process. Okay, uh, ini ada lagi proses lagi tapi sebab masa dah singkat nanti tak sempat Q&A Saya skip yang jadual tu, uh, ini ada lagi tanya ni Oh Fazi, the five method uh, Sudah, Fazi eh, kejap eh Saya ni bukan pakar Fazi Sekejap So, boleh, clear eh So clear regarding, so this is another method you can see Uh, this okay on the left side ni uh, this is uh, Chua ni uh, is a uh, Dr. Chua or oh, the Dr. Chua dah. So Dr. Chua is a PhD student under Dr. Bala because last time I was the internal examiner eh. I was an internet examiner and and, and then the, the good thing about this one uh, Dr. Chua tried to come out a, a apa ni, instrument dia nak come out and instrument eh instrument dapat ni instrument selection and development this is the existing instrument ha ni nampak ni instrument existing ada 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six existing instrument and then he go to the phase one analysis analysis of need and conception nampak ni so what he did Uh, preliminary assessment undergraduate maknanya he give the preliminary assessment undergraduate creative level uh, figure form one I think he uh, he give the questionnaire and then and then he literature review and then come out a conceptual model for CTSM and then the second stage design and development intervention program And then he identify this all apa nama ni method scramble lah brain, brain sketching lah and then he went for the expert validation so he just uh, find five expert yeah. and then he went for the pilot study 
and then at the last stage implementation and evolution he run the experiment uh, nampak ni experiment nampak ni eh? and then he uh, ni ni maknanya he conduct the purposive sampling according to the criteria rendered assignment to control and intervention maknanya he run the quasi experiment nampak nampak uh, he run the quasi experiment uh, for this research this is another idea and maknanya you can uh, follow this idea yes, and yeah. you can yes. modify eh? so the methodology can be modified as long you can justify is okay uh, and then on this right side this is my my own methodology during my phd uh, the same flow so literature review preliminary survey yeah. validation criteria uh, using the focus group discussion and then uh, through the apa nama ni quantity survey lah this is also another idea but i think maybe i skip this one the same thing i i will explain just you can you can show like this at least you understand the flow from the phase one to the phase two to the phase three lah yeah because my research involve both eh? the qualitative additive view plus the quantitative to come out the uh, criteria weightage for the site selection from both this weightage i is inside the gis to find the location for the new manufacturing plant and which mean i get the weightage from the expert i put the weightage inside the gis model to identify the new site for the precast manufacturing plant so this is another method eh? And then chapter four, okay, saya alalah habiskan lah sikit lagi. And then chapter four, okay, you need to interpret. Yeah? So during your interpret, the overall finding of the study analysis can be presented in table and figure and stable to enable important discovery to be highlighted. Each table should consist the introduction of the table. Oh, sorry, I got typo writing. I'm very sorry. Adi Zaibaki. And then the finding can be also written more than one chapter. But the finding, you can have two chapter instead of having one chapter. If you have a lot of analysis data, you can present it to two chapter, which means you can have more than one chapter. I think this already I, I discussed. And then the last chapter, so this during the discussion, conclusion and recommendation, this chapter can also discuss the study finding by relating theory and the past research. So during the discussion, you need to relate the literature review and under your discussion. It is the best time, uh, if it is the best, the study finding discussion are written according to the sequence of the objective. It's good to report objective one, objective two, objective three, uh, you can report it. Each objective uh, and on uh, all the finding answer. Eh? The study also can suggest a new innovation or new idea and significant and implication of research conducted on the field of the study must be stated. Eh? And then suggestion, you must highlight the future research eh, for the recommendation. 